through majestic forests, alpine valleys and crystal clear lakes, following the trails of wild animals in search of rare birds in places where no man had set a foot before. Precious, magnificent nature in all its diversity and grandeur in the documentary series Kazakhstan's Wildlife Sanctuaries. Riparian thickets along the Sirdaria River, effluent in the winter months, had greeted us with unusual nighttime concert. Barking of jackals is echoing in the desert, combines in real arts of some sort. At night, they are masters of the steppe. Hearing the high-pitched whine, one feels uneasy. You wouldn't want to move away from your home, or at least from the car. At this time, jackals get in packs and are dangerous, even for young angulates. Good sense of smell helps them follow and kill animals and birds. Flocks lead nocturnal life, hiding in the bushes and reeds. To catch a red predator is not an easy task. Sometimes it is possible even in the protected area, and it is officially encouraged. Stray dogs and jackals cause serious damage to wildlife here. Jackals hunt for pheasants and leverets. Predators go after roe deer and deer, so it is allowed to shoot these animals all year round. Later in the afternoon, when it gets dark, employees of the park throw around the feet wet oats in special wooden trough. Glorious Bactrian deer have long been accustomed to this and look forward to a long-awaited food. During the cold winter months, it can be very useful. In September 2016, the youngest in the region, Sirdarya Turkestan National Regional Park, turned three years. It was created to preserve rare and endangered species of plants and animals to protect archaeological, historical and cultural monuments. The park consists of three branches. Its total area is 120,000 hectares. Our guide Vasily works in these places a good half of life. He has seen a lot, reached the riddles of wildlife with ease. During the night he lays out the feed carefully preparing for the morning meeting with Jetusu pheasants. Bright cocks and modest chicks inhabit riparian forests with thickets of thorny silverberry and rose heap in large numbers. With skillful hand, wildlife manager throws the corn out of the window of an all to us. He knows their habits. Pheasants are going to come at dawn. Night feeding went successfully. In the morning, pheasants confidently walk on sites where food was sprinkled in total darkness the night before. Well-fed birds feel just fine. Fashionistas' roosters, shimmering with their bronze feathers and their bright cheeks, are obviously posing for the camera. But humble cheeks, on the contrary, are trying to escape the camera. That's how nature works. During the spring, hens have to breed up to eight or even ten cheeks which they need protect against numerous threats. Therefore, their feathers are grey and unattractive. In contrast, males' bright successes of their kind are always in sight. The big river has always been beckoning all living things. In these impenetrable thickets, the food is plenty at any time of the year and it's perfect for hiding from dangers, says our guide. Vasily is preserving the nature for future generations. I've spent more than 20 years here. Protecting the nature is something I like a lot. I wish to preserve something for children, grandchildren, so that at least something remains.
Turkestan and Sirdaria branches are located in the floodplain of the Sirdaria and Aris rivers. The preservation focuses of these areas are sandy desert landscapes and remnant riparian forests with their unique flora and fauna. The main tree of local forests is the ancient Turanga tree. It's poplar, which has a very characteristic crown. In the course of centuries, it adapted to survive in the saline desert soils. Several desert poplar groves can be found in the national park. They are not hard to detect among riparian forests. These lightly colored groves grow together with thickets of silverberry and impassable areas of salt trees and cane. This is where wild boars, roe deer and pheasants find shelter and food. Riparian bushes are favorite habitat areas for pheasant. In winter time, the birds fed throughout the day, from the early morning until very late in the evening. Their feed includes cane seeds, rose heaps, and even frozen insects that are found on their way. One of the main tasks of the park inspectors, apart from wildlife protection, is suppressing illegal logging of riparian forests. In case of fire, there are fire crew watchers at the cordon. The park has a specially equipped fire truck, which can cross on any landscape. Fortunately, rains are common for the late autumn, and for the last couple of days, everyone was expecting the snow. After all, it is a vital moisture for the soil for the upcoming year, and probability of fire diminishes. Numerous archaeological sites located within the park and its immediate surroundings are worth looking at. Their background is entwined with history of the caravan routes of the Silk Road. These are numerous settlements of Arab district, with the famous city of Atrar that was rubbed off from the land surface by Genghis Khan troops to be reborn again centuries later. Mausoleums of Arsan Bab and Hajjah Mirdi Sawi, pearls of the ancient architecture, are nearby as well. One of the main tasks of the natural park is to develop tourism, primarily ecotourism. Previous winter in the southern regions of Kazakhstan was warm and snowless. There was no ice on ponds and rivers at all. This fall, things took different turn, seems that winter is going to be snowy. Snow drifts are piling up in the northern and central regions of the country and south is expecting it to snow any day. In the meantime, it is clear that more birds had stayed for the winter than usual. Waters of the Great River reach Kazakhstan after passing through Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Our life is like a river, philosophizes our guide Vasily Kemer. The streams wash away bad things from our memory, so only good remains. Gracefully and dizzy rowers pedals cut ice cold water and push the boat forward. I think that everyone loves water in summer and in winter. Our engine is off and we are hoping that a boar or roe deer will show themselves on the banks of Sirdaria, but cautious animals are not to be seen. Apparently, they are grazing somewhere in riparian meadows. Vasily says he fits boars in a special way. We'll observe him do it. The boar was here. He didn't finish it. See the grains. I look after the wild boar same as I would do with domesticated pigs. They came here. You can see by the trail that they were itching. This is their huckle, and here is their feeder. We put apples, carrots. Ants are helping out. All the animals are preparing for the winter. They take everything. Boars have very poor eyesight. They don't need it in the dense reeds. What they have is a great ear and a great sense of smell. A wild pig senses the smell of grain in several dozens of meters corn even further. This is why the ranch is putting food into the shallow pits and covers it with stump, so that magpies won't take it apart. Wild birds love to dig, they'll definitely find it. The main attraction and pride of the Turkestan branch is the nursery to restore the population of Bactrian or Tugai deer. 
The fate of this rare subspecies of red deer is very instructive. It lived in the flood plain of the Sirdaria River for centuries. Until the mid-20th century, these animals could be found in these areas, but they were unable to compete for habitat with humans. The last deer was killed in 1956. Only in 2001, eight animals were brought to the Sirdaria from hunting area Karachingil. Today, the local livestock is no longer in danger. Animals are fed daily. Every bag of grain is being utilized. Half domesticated deers have long been accustomed to people, and upon hearing the engine of the car, immediately rushed to the feeder. <laughs> I work with Merrill since 2001. There are now 63 heads. They live in enclosure and those running outside, there are around 126 heads. There's enough of the feed. We prepare hay. We feed them twice a day, mixed grains and vegetables. We give them cabbages and carrots. They are eating well. Protected deer breed well. It is pleasing to see how many young animals there are. The huge aviary provides certain freedom, but there are visible problems. The animals are obviously too small. Inbreeding doesn't benefit the animals, and zoologists are right when they show their concern. <laughs> We have only one problem, the need to upgrade the gene fund. In order to increase their production, we need to bring new females and males. At the moment, we have three male specialists and one veterinarian. There is a surveillance of the area. I think the state of the Bacterian D is good. It is also planned to open a 10-hectare big nursery for Siberian raw deer. All documents are prepared. Next to it, it is planned to build an aviary for pheasants. These are the things planned for the 2017 budget. These are the tasks we've set for ourselves. This summer we have visited the mountain branch of the natural park Boraldai. Its area is over 36,000 hectares. There are about 700 plant species growing on these slopes and in ravines, many of which are endemics, relics and rare species listed in the Red Book of Kazakhstan. One of them, Fritillaria severtsovi, also known as Tau alga. Elder people know it better. The flower was made from its bulbs. The flower was used to make flatbreads. Not particularly tasty, but very nutritious. They saved many lives during the hunger of the 30s of the last century. The scientific study of animal life started here in the mid-19th century. That was the time when Argali was first scientifically described. Protection of this species is under special attention here. This year, the Natural Park initiated the creation of an ecological corridor along protected areas for migratory routes of Karatau Argali. These paths run through the ridges of Karatau in the South Kazakhstan region. A detailed study of the fauna of birds began in the early 20th century. The expedition routes of Kazakh ornithologists Igor Dolgushin and Mstislav Korelov passed through these areas. Today, there are more than 250 bird species that inhabit these places. Red lizard black stalk, golden eagle, booted eagle can be met here. The shady groves are home for little birds, paradise flycatcher, golden oriole and southern nightingale. The management plans are focused on continuing the comprehensive study of the nature and historical sites, local flora and fauna. These days, overflowing Surdaria continues leisurely flowing into the Aral Sea. New winter comes onto the lands of far south of Kazakhstan. We have seen the amount of care put into the well-being of many residents of the reserve. And this makes us hopeful for the bright prospects of this natural reserve.